What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been about, what, six months since my last video. Uh, as you can see, my setup is a bit, dude, I did not even set that mic up right. Uh, as you can see, my setup is a bit different now and that's because I moved to beautiful Colorado. So if you live out here, don't hit me up. I don't really want to hang out. I'm just kidding, kind of. Let's run that intro. So as a lot of you already know, I had the pleasure of being invited by Benny Productions onto his YouTube channel, Benny Productions, to uh, compete in his series called Edit Race. It was awesome. We both got to make movie posters for one of my all-time favorite movies, Jurassic Park. After that video, a ton of you guys slid into my DMs and were asking for a breakdown on how I made the piece. Even though there's a video already on the channel that kind of shows how I did it, but besides the point. It got me thinking about starting a new series called Behind the Layers. Essentially, I'm gonna be doing a deep dive into some of my favorite pieces I've made in the past and some of your guys' favorite pieces that I've made in the past. Kind of just go over how I made them, any challenges that came up along the way, maybe things I would do differently now, uh, just with the newer skill set that I have, and maybe you'll pick up some tips and tricks along the way. So with that, let's uh, let's start this voyage. Oof, is that is that cheesy? Super cheesy, love it. So I started off with this super rough sketch just to block in my main concept. I can't draw for poop, so that's why it looks like poop. First, I cut out this image of the Jeep Wrangler. The front wheels were actually slightly turned to the left, so I cut out the back wheel and blended it over the top of the front left one. Next, I used Spin Blur to make the rims look like they were spinning. From there, I moved to adding in the T-Rex. I did some light puppet warp on it, really just to get the head pointed down more so it was looking at the Jeep. The original leg from this image was really weird, uh, so I swapped it with this slightly less weird leg. From there, I added in the stock photo of some muddy ground, transformed it a bit, added in some foreground plants to help with the depth, and then some mid-ground ones. These mid-ground ones were gonna help connect the back forest I was gonna add. And you can't have a Jeep driving itself because uh, it's a Jeep and not a Tesla. So I added Mr. Robert Muldoon, the uh, Raptor expert from the movie, into the front. Of course, he was holding a shotgun, which wasn't going to work. Uh, so I found this super lame stock photo of this guy, Hi. cut his arm off, and photoshopped it onto Robert Muldoon's body. I wasn't too concerned about getting it perfect just yet, uh, as I'm still kind of just blocking things in. After that, it was time to add some trees into the background. I found these cool ones from photobash.org. Yes, I bought them, and they already came cut out, which saved me a ton of time. So I started adding some to the background. I knew I wanted to have a bit of a break in the middle to allow for some almost moonlight to kind of peek through. I grabbed this image of a sky, scaled it up, duplicated it for the top, added a layer mask, and then I just used a cloud brush to blend them together. Then I added a dark gradient to the top just to darken that area a little bit. I was overall pretty happy with the composition. I knew I might move things around as I progressed, but I figured it was time to start getting the lighting going. So I used curves to darken most of the images in here, and then applied selective color. I used the neutral tab within selective color, specifically shifting the cyans and yellows, until I got that dark blue, teal kind of nighttime look. I added some rough shadows to Robert, darkened him as well, and then tinted his colors with selective color. I wasn't too concerned with these shadows being super accurate as the scene was going to be pretty dark. Next, I darkened the T-Rex again using curves, then started darkening up the foreground leaves and background trees. I used a dust brush just to paint in some haze. As things move further away from the camera, they don't have as much contrast. The haze that I added in helps with that contrast and also gives it a sense of depth, making certain trees seem further away. I went into my brush settings and just flattened the brush a little bit. And then I just did some quick shadows underneath those mid-ground uh, trees there. I wanted to start detailing the Jeep, so I added in this photo of water beating down glass, put it in screen mode, which hides the blacks, and masked out the edges and wipers so that the window looked wet. Dropped in some mud splatter images on the side of the Jeep, darkened them up, and just put them in multiply mode. This helped to make the Jeep look a lot more dirty as if it had been driving through the mud. I quickly painted on the mask of the curves layer that I used to darken the car, just to brighten up the areas where the headlights were. I uh, just said that this area would appear brighter in the final edit. As you can see, 
I bounce around a lot when I work on pieces. I don't like staying in the same area for too long. It just kind of bores me. So from there, same thing. I added another curves layer and then painted more shadows on the T-Rex to make him fit the scene more. I wanted him to look a bit more wet. So I used color range, made a selection of the highlights, copied those, then pasted them on a new layer over top of the T-Rex and put them in screen mode. This just helps the highlights of the T-Rex pop a bit more and it kind of resembles a watery look. I did the same process for the leg as well. Then I went into my brush settings, flattened my brush again, and painted some rough shadows underneath the T-Rex. I used a curve layer on the ground plane to paint some rough shadows under the Jeep, then added another curves layer on the Jeep to darken the sides facing away from the light source. I wanted the car to look wet, so I used the same image from the windshield, duplicated it a few times, transformed it, and just placed it on the sides in front of the car. I masked them to the appropriate areas and then just put them in screen mode and dropped the opacity a bit. This helped make the Jeep look like it was actually wet. Now for the droplets on the hood. You may be tempted to find droplet brushes for this, uh, but if you look at photos of rain hitting any surface from a distance, you really kind of just see an almost misty white surface and then patches of splatter. So I dropped in this stock image, warped it to fit the hood, gave it a mask, then used a water brush to draw some of it back in. Honestly, you can use any brush though. I have a splatter brush, which is basically just a bunch of dots spread out. Uh, any spray paint type brush would pretty much do the same thing, but I use that to paint back in some of those bigger areas to kind of replicate those droplet hits. I set the brush in my brush settings to make sure that it would change size randomly from large to small, and this just helped with that variation. I also did this on the top of the car, the mirror, and on top of the T-Rex. All right, we're getting closer to finishing this. The Jeep was driving in wet mud, so I had to add some water spraying up. So I found some stock water splashes, cut them out, placed them in, and used Warp and Transform to get them to look how I wanted. I changed their color using Hue and Saturation just to help give them a bit more of a muddy water look. I then darkened them using Curves. I made sure I was using a different adjustment layer to darken them because I wanted to go back in and lighten up some of these areas. Water kind of has a bit of a translucent look, uh, as well as like specular light to it. And so using that splatter brush, I was able to go back in and kind of just brighten up some of these areas and replicate that translucency uh, and a bit of that specular feeling. I repeated this process for the water on the other side of the car and the water that was under the foot of the T-Rex. For the headlights, I simply added some lens flares over top in screen mode and then used some sunshine brushes just to kind of replicate the beams coming out ahead of the Jeep. Okay, a ton of you guys were asking me how I made the rain. The rain is actually made from images that I made using Adobe After Effects years ago, and I've just saved them out and I've been using them for rain ever since. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the entire process. There's tutorials on YouTube that show you exactly how to do this. But the key thing to remember whenever you're trying to add snow or rain to stuff is variation in size. You should always have smaller particles for the areas that are in the background, average size ones for the mid ground, and then much larger ones that are up close to the camera. And those ones that are up close to the camera, they're gonna be a lot less than the ones that are in the mid ground and the background. It just really helps with the depth and the realism. Finally, I did some painting around the edge of the T-Rex just to give it some rim lighting. Uh, I went around the body, the head, the teeth, uh, the leg, just areas where I thought some light might catch. Then I stepped away from this piece for a bit and came back to it to do some final adjustments and some final details. Lastly, it was time to do that color grading in Camera Raw. I wanted that deep blue aqua to really shine through with a hint of magenta. Uh, I don't have this part fully recorded as it's really just me playing with a bunch of sliders until my eyes go, hey, that looks good, stop. But just mess around with Camera Raw, see what the settings do. The more time you spend in it, uh, the more comfortable you'll be, and you'll just kind of know exactly what you want to do to the piece when you're you know, doing the color grading. I will say having some basic color theory knowledge uh, is super helpful. Then I added the logo to the top and the poster text to the bottom, and there we have it, the final piece. Overall, I think it turned out pretty cool, and I think it does a pretty good job at capturing that chase scene from the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, give it a like. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, none of that TikTok shit, though, and feel very, very free to subscribe. Why do I keep saying that? I feel very, very, who said? Benny says that all. Damn it, Benny, you're taking all the phrases, man. Please subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me. 
Uh, I love making these videos and I definitely want to keep making more of them. So your support would, would be awesome. Uh, and with that, I'll see you guys in my next video, which hopefully will not be six months from now. Uh, realistically, it'll probably be like five months and 29 to 30 days or so. I'm just kidding. It'll probably be in a couple weeks. I'll see you guys then. Need to learn how to talk to the camera. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs>